Hi guys, Mary's here. Today I will introduce you one of the most popular armies, a crowd's favorite, the Imperial Fists. These yellow boys have many fans, including Chapter Master Varlak, a huge Imperial Fist enthusiast. I literally never seen such a big fan. Chris Kidbash, the model for this army, and now he will share the story behind it. I bought this Imperial Fist Battle Force a long time ago, but since then it hasn't been very useful. Today I do Assault Jump Pack Primaries. This box won't be very useful either, but there is nice upgrade sprue inside. So everyone knew that sooner or later Primaries will get proper Assault Infantry, and here they are. Unfortunately, as we don't receive any gifts from GW, we need to solve problems differently. Printer go brrrr. DMS did fantastic job. In my honest opinion, better scouts. Personally, I don't like Imperial Eagles too much. I have a lot of bits boxes. And for this project, Assault Intercessor bits are perfect. I try to make each one model different. As in 10th edition most special weapons are free, I gave free weapons as well. Plasma pistol for the trooper and the hand flamer with the fist for the squad leader. And as a finishing touch, these cool little details. There you go! Now it's time for painting. We used a lot of yellow color. Yellow is indeed a challenging color to paint. It can be difficult to maintain its saturation and prevent it from shifting to a strange hue during shading and highlighting. One crucial factor is the choice of the base color. If you use black or a cool toned base, the yellow may shift towards a greenish tone. On the other hand, using brown as a base will make the yellow appear more vibrant. Coverage is also vital when working with yellow. If you want a well-saturated yellow, it's worth investing in high-quality paint with a substantial pigment concentration. Nicola applies a good coverage paint to half of the mini and less coverage paint to the other half. You can see the difference. The same applies to shading. If you want shadows to look good, consider using warm brown instead of black for darkening. We begin by priming the minis with brown primer. Next, we use German red brown as a base coat, covering the entire model with it. We add Panzer Grey to the previous color and use it for weathering. The goal is to achieve a chipping effect on the armor. Up to this point, we create rust effect that will appear on the scratched armor. Now, we apply matte varnish, ideally two coats, to ensure the previous work is well protected. Once everything is truly dry, we apply two, three layers of chipping medium. Then we cover everything with a yellow mix with Sienna color. After that, we create highlights using pure yellow. Next, we move on to shading using Sienna. It's time for another round of highlights, but this time they're stronger. We mix yellow with the white and apply it more precisely. The order is essential, uh, because the shadow in this case is more scattered, making it easier to accidentally cover other surfaces. We don't want the precise light to be obscured. Uh, finally, we apply water to the figure and wait a moment until the chipping medium activates. Honestly, I hate doing this effect because I don't have full control over what will be chipped off and what won't. We let the chipping medium dry 
but not for too long as the longer it dries the harder it becomes to chip off the thickness of the layer we apply on the chipping medium is also crucial if it's too thick it will come off in flakes but if it's too thin the paint will dissolve let's get back to our mini if the chipping medium has been applied correctly very gentle brush strokes are sufficient. Finally, we rinse the mini with water and air to remove the chipped paint. Now let's paint the head and backpack. We start by coloring them with black paint entirely. Then we use pencil gray, applying it about 80-ish percent of the surfaces. We add gray to the previous color and apply highlights. For the base, we paint the entire surface with pencil gray. Then we add grey and cover around 80 percent of the base. Then we use grey for very precise highlights. We use raw amber for shading. And lastly, a touch of white on the edges of the base. In the end, Nicola drills holes in the barrels. Now Maya applies base coat, ensuring that every surface that shouldn't be yellow is well covered. Now let's move on to Claudia's work. The process of painting yellow, especially when creating this specific effect, involves not omitting any colors within the spectrum. We have six different paints here, and if we were to skip any of them, the effect would turn out entirely different. She starts by making a glaze, primarily in the shadows. If she applies too much to a large surface, she wipes off some of the paint from the most protruding areas. Then she blends the armor, intensifying the colors she's already used. She adds highlights and brighten until it reaches white. Now if she finds that the shade of one of the surfaces looks too cool, she glazes that surface with burnt sienna. Claudia begins painting the heads starting with the one belonging to the leader. This particular head will be painted slightly differently because the commander has an exposed face. She doesn't use pre-made flesh-colored paints. Instead, she mixes burnt sienna with white to create a nice fleshy color. If she wants the color to be cooler, she adds a bit of burnt amber. She uses burnt amber as well in the shadows, as it allows her to deepen them. Now she goes back to the breathing apparatus. For the regular soldier heads, she starts with a black wash. She adds small details. She adjusts the colors after airbrushing. Often dark colors tend to grey when used alongside light colors. But we want the backpacks to be black. So she takes the little black paint and applies it almost all over, avoiding on wiping only the brightest areas. Now she starts with the middle color. In this case it's grey and blend it. She gradually lightens this grey until it reaches pure white. Next she paints burnt sienna on the exhausts of the engines. Then she brightens them step by step with the colors she used for painting the armor. For the brightest light reflections she uses whites with a touch of yellow. Finally, she paints the skull black and emphasizes the edges.
Let's take a break from painting and invite your favorite Polish teacher, Paweł. Hello, dear students. Welcome on our next lesson. The word for today is żółty. It means yellow. I repeat, żółty. Thanks, Paweł. And now let's see how Claudia is painting. Now she applies highlights to the cloth, the gun holster, and finally the weapon itself. Then she applies metallic paints to the tip of the weapon and do a light dry brush. In my opinion, metallic paints look best if the deep shadow is non-metallic. She adds a rust effect on the weapon, but she applies it with regular acrylic paints because this way she has more control. Nicola attaches the minis to the bases. Claudia paints cobalt steel eyes and also plasma element on the weapon. Now it's time for decaling. She uses two liquids, softer and setter for this. First she soaks the decal in water. Then she applies setter to the mini. Setter adheres the decal to the model. Now she applies softer, which softens it and makes the decal adhere better. Finally, when everything is dry, she applies brown paint for the rust effect to better match the weathered armor. Now Claudia moves on to finishing. She highlights the edges on the weapon with white paint and the teeth of the chainsaw with metallic paint. Now she uses an oil wash. Remember to mix it well as it tends to separate. She pours brown wash on the recesses of the yellow armor and light moss green wash into the recesses of the black armor. Now she paints the base. Claudia mixes black paint with raw amber and heavily diluted. She applies it to the recesses. Then she adds white and paint the elements of the base that she wants to highlight. Now she takes an even lighter paint and applies it only to the most protruding elements. Finally, Claudia takes the dirty down rust effect and apply it to the metallic elements on the base. The last step is to apply cobalt teal paint to the exhaust of the engines. And after it dries, she adds light moss green wash. Nicola varnishes the minis and they are ready.
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, don't forget to press the like button. And if you're new and want to see more of our videos, don't forget to subscribe our channel. And don't forget to leave the comment down below with the word you learned today. Bye-bye!